I've been working on that. I went to the gym today. What's going on, everybody? This is the Man Up Podcast with my homeboy, Wes, the Armadillo Wrangler Dunham. And I'm excited to be here because, bro, you got the stones in the ears. Got them. You got the stones in the ears. You're here with the stones in the ears. That's it. I didn't even know you had ears. Oh, man, yeah. Up. I've had my ears pierced since I was like 12. Damn. So you was flossing at 12. For you sure. You was flossing. You little, I, I'll be honest with you. I've never had my ears pierced. I put them in because Tyler wears his a lot. And I was like, I'm going to stunt mine and see what it's like. What's it like? What's it like being I, on the podcast I, I, with it? I've been stunting since I put them in, dude. I can't stop. Bruh. That's wild. <laughs> That's wild, cuz. Look, look. We're, we're going to be running sort of a... Sort of ask me anything episode. So if you're joining in, make sure to put questions in the uh, comment section in the chat box so that we can um, so that we can respond to any questions that you guys have. We have enough listeners that I'm sure we'll get some good ones. But at, let us know any questions that you guys have, anything I want us to address, talk about, or questions you have for us. Put them in the chat. Um, yeah. So. I don't have a lot planned for this episode. I feel like we just kick it and kind of see what that. comes up. Um, I do like the earrings, though. I'm going to be honest. I can't pull them off. I've never liked earrings. I don't normally like earrings on dudes. I was going to see if I put them back in because I hadn't worn them in years. I put them back in to see um, how it felt wearing them and how I put it, you know, how if I want to keep them in for a while. Because uh, I took my wife and my, my son Evan to uh, – Shop, yes. Her birthday is coming up soon, so she wanted to go shopping. So we went to uh, the mall in Tuscaloosa yesterday, and they had that Spencer's in there. And I was like, "Man, I ain't been Spencer's. to Spencer's. I ain't been to Spencer's in forever." So Spencer's. I went in there and saw him, and I said, "Man, Tyler's always rocking his. Let me, let me, let me get some right quick and check them out." So, so you rocking earrings from Spencer's? That's it. man. You should have lied I and mean, been like went to this jewelry store, like high end jewelry store. Dude, with these, I, I love going in that store. Though stuff. I hadn't been in there in years. I went back in there just like it was. I don't know that I've ever bought anything in there. I think maybe a, a uh, like a poster or something. One I time. bought a strobe light one time for that. Ooh, bro, you was stunting. I was young. You was stunting with the strobe. You had to put the glasses on like this. Yep. Put your sunglasses on in your own bedroom. I've always been afraid that they'd give me a seizure. They make you feel weird, for yeah. real. Yeah, I've always been afraid they're going to give me a seizure. Every time I've ever uh, been around a strobe light, I've always been kind of like, I've never had a seizure before, but I've always been scared. And I know that sounds stupid. But it makes you feel strange. I remember the first time I ever encountered a strobe light. I was um, I was still living in Texas, and I was with a friend of mine, and his mother took us to a haunted house. Mm. And some so at some point in that haunted house, you had to walk down this um, like a corridor, and there was a strobe light up top. And I remember, and, and it was coming at you, but it was also like a train sound behind it. But the strobe light was coming, and I remember I just felt like I was just fishing to just give over. And I was like, man, it just made me feel weird. So in the in the land of the strobe lights, you're going down first, basically. You and epileptic people. No, I, that's why I bought one so I could uh, get used to it. You're training. Yeah, acclimat- I mean, I customize myself. To yeah, it. you're training. <laughs> I, I remember the first time I ever was at a strobe light. I was at a, see, I wasn't allowed to go to haunted houses as a kid. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch scary movies. I wasn't allowed to go to haunted houses. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling. Um, I wasn't allowed <laughs> to watch uh, anything with cussing in it, really, either. Hmm. Um, which is a little ironic now, but. I get that, but wrestling. You know, I do and I don't. I'm I'm really protecting I have a, people. I have from- an issue about with the the our cultures, especially like Christian culture, about cuss words. Mm-hmm. I'm really, and it's the reason why I don't stop saying them, and the reason I don't plan on stop saying them. See, my parents don't watch the podcast. My dad even said something to me about the other day. He said, like, "You know, I've tried to watch a YouTube channel, but it's, you got too many." Uh, bad words on it you, you cuss mm-hmm. too much and i kind of have a little bit of an issue with it i have an issue with it and i, I want to i'm just gonna get it out because I've, I've been thinking about this a lot about what cuss words are mm-hmm. okay so if you want to say you shouldn't say cuss words because they're common or they're vulgar i can kind of i can kind of get on board with that but when you start getting into this like cuss words are evil mm-hmm. i kind of can't g haw with that and here's the reason why there is one verse in the Bible that when taken way out of context, kind of, sort of, says you shouldn't cuss, right? 
and it says avoid filthy language. In mm-hmm. one version, it says avoid abusive language. But if you read the the scripture, it's like you know, uh, avoid slander. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, don't be mean to people. That kind of stuff. That's what the, that's what the, the the verse was getting ahead on. Um, here's the reason why I can't get down with it. What you're telling me, and this is the belief of most Christians who are against cuss words. There is an all knowing, all powerful all seeing God who is not bound by time, right? He wrote a book and everything in that book is everything I need to know. So I don't burn in hell for all eternity. And he forgot to tell us we couldn't say cuss words. Mm -hmm. That makes absolutely no logical sense. Right. I get it. It makes no logical sense Mm -hmm. that you're telling me that an all powerful, all omniscient, all knowing, omnipresent, unbound by time, space, or matter, all good being that loves us unconditionally is going to make me burn forever for something and then forgot to tell me not to do it. And then you apply those rules to a whole bunch of other things, right? But that doesn't make sense. Now, let me tell you what does make sense. What does make sense is a whole bunch of holier than thou people got together one day and they were like, how can we make ourselves better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we're not going to use commoner words. We're not going to use words that the commoners use. We're not going to use the words that the simpletons use. <laughs> we're going to be better. We're going to be the Pharisees of our time. Literally, if you have a problem with cuss words or you think people are going to hell for cuss words, you are mm-hmm. literally a Pharisee in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You are a Pharisee. You are the people. <laughs> Jesus came to earth and he didn't say anything to the prostitutes. He didn't say anything to the tax collectors. Um, he didn't say anything to anybody but the Pharisees, mm-hmm. the people that were supposed to be holding up the law, but instead were using it to make themselves feel better and look better than everybody else around them. And so much of what I think has become the culture of the, in, in churches and stuff today, that's what it is. And that's the reason, mm-hmm. one of the reasons why I don't, it's really hard for me to get involved, get involved in churches because I just, I look at like those types of teachings and I'm just like, mm, it just sounds mm-hmm. like bullshit to me. I mean, I feel the same way about um, what they what they call cuss words or curse words too, because they don't mean the same thing across languages like other words do. You know, so they're not um, like, for instance, British curse word like bloody. Right. So we can just, say bloody. Right. You know. So yeah, it's just commoner words. Right. It's common words, and and and, then, and if and you're then, gonna label it like that as a cuss word, well, the people who don't cuss, whenever they get pissed off and say frick, if you're same using thing. it in the same tone same language and you're directing the, so I say, I, same I, I'm the exact same way same I don't, thing. yeah exact same thing or um, go, golly you know or darn right. if you're saying it the way i say you're telling me i can't use the words i use is what you're saying exactly it makes yeah. no damn sense yeah. i'm I've, not gonna do it i feel the same and way. while in a lot of areas with my parents i tend to kind of like i tend to kind of like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of because a lot of things we don't know what it if it matters or not mm-hmm. you know we don't know we don't know and maybe because we're cousin is a sin I just can't believe that God hates me so much he forgot to tell me. Mm-hmm. You know, because he would have yeah. to hate me to not tell me. He would have to. He would have to hate I'm me like you, to not if tell you, me. If you think of the context like or smoking perverse, weed, that's another one. Like perverse language or abusive language, well, that, I, that to me, I, I consider that like... You're fat. That's yeah, like, bu- yeah, like bullying yeah. and using the words to bully somebody or, right. or you're talking about sexually explicit stuff. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Derek, he on here. De- Gim, boy. Yep. He always on YouTube at four o'clock on Saturday. I like that. But if I stump my toe and I blurt out, you know, a uh, four letter word, can are we are we like cutting back on cussing? I mean, you can still say it. Okay, just, you can still say it. Like, I mean, if you want to say, I mean, fuck, well, they know what I mean. Twice, yeah. But I just you know, don't so want. To, I don't. I don't want to like risk anything with YouTube right. monetization or anything with like a lot of it. Yeah. But but that's that's one of my issues with it, man. Same thing with smoking weed, bro. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're, t- I am you're not telling me, it. you're telling me that an all omniscient, all knowing God put a plant on this planet with no bad side effects, didn't put it in his book that I couldn't smoke it. Mm-hmm. It makes me love my family more and want to, want to sit and chill and listen to music and think about God and the, the sunshine. And that plant's going to send me to hell. Mm-hmm. That makes no sense. That doesn't make any freaking it has, has been sense. proven and is still being researched to 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 uh, provide 
a uh, lot of benefits. Yeah, knowledge to yeah, health, medical, a, um, a, a like, lot of good shit. Like we're not we're doctors. Just, we like we're just talking doctors. about with uh, the the. Uh, Strobe lights and people epilepsy. Epilepsy. Oh yeah, seizures and stuff. CBD has been known to calm those and not cure them. I'm not saying cure them, but slow the uh, the episodes. Or mushrooms. And, the way yeah, the, oh, yeah. the way the way that people talk, the talk about mushrooms. It has been proven to be the there. There's a Netflix documentary called How to Change Your Mind. You should watch it if you haven't watched it already. It's really good. And they talk about like mushrooms are like the most effective treatment for PC a PTSD. What's it called? Uh, How to Change Your Mind. On Netflix, if you want to type yeah. that bad boy in there, yeah, you know what I'm saying. How to change. Type that bad boy in there, so you know you know what's good. You know what's because that stuff interests me, guys. If you if you're watching us live, if you have any questions, this is a AMA episode. So if you have questions, comments, anything you want us to to address, talk about, or answer, this is the episode to get it done, baby. To get it done. Um. Cuss words is, has really become one of my hot button topics, honestly, because we're in the South. Mm-hmm. You know, places outside the South aren't as bad. You know, we're teetotalers. You don't cuss. You don't drink. Uh, everybody does, but just behind closed doors kind of thing. Um, in my opinion, if I'm doing something that doesn't hurt anybody, it doesn't hurt me, doesn't hurt you, doesn't hurt my children, it provides a better quality of life for myself. Mm-hmm. Like, why would why is that bad? Why is it bad for me, you know, to do these things and I just I think I think moderation is important in anything. If you're smoking weed, drinking alcohol, eating eating Fritos, mm-hmm. going to the pool, whatever. You got you do it in moderation, right? You you do Especially it Especially with mushrooms because you, I mean, if you microdose and, and and do that to you know to uh suppress PTSD and all that. I think it's but, but, not if, you, a trip, but if you sit a, there and you just a eat a trip will will will, will one trip can oh, cure hard trip? PTSD forever. One really? trip. That's why it's not that's why that's why in my opinion, that's why big pharmaceuticals and uh, the government have made it and kept it illegal because you can't keep selling pills to people who are cured. Right. Yeah. You can't sell pills to people that aren't sick, dog. You can't sell you can't sell pills to to people who 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 are happy and 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 having a, a fantastic life. You can't sell drugs to those people. So let's tell them. Let's get them all to agree that it's a sin, mm-hmm. and let's all get them to agree that it's it's satanic. Even though the Bible doesn't say anything about it again. And then let's all get them to agree that you should go to jail for these plants and these herbs that that God put on this planet and can cure OCD, PTSD, um, anxiety. Has, is, I mean, unbelievable results on all of these things. Dang. And we're going to tell grown men it is 100 percent. The most been proven to be, uh, I think it's like eighty five percent of people who do mushrooms quit smoking. What? Yeah, it's insane. I, I knew that insane there had been numbers. research on it about uh, mushrooms. I thought it was like I thought if you took it in microdose, you had no, to be like a daily thing. But no, so one hard trip, one hard trip, wow, that's crazy. It's a lifetime cure. See if you could microdose it and do it every single day. A brain, um, like a brain research. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, a brain research. It allow it, it like allows you to it allows you it makes your brain. Uh, malleable it allows you to rewire it now it's de- now let me here's how i think mushrooms are dangerous and me and alan talked a little bit about mushrooms didn't we on the no we me and alan never talked about mushrooms okay oh well we should have because that would have been a good one but the thing about mushrooms are um they tend they make your brain malleable so if whatever is around at that time so if you're like a charismatic leader and you get everybody to do mushrooms together those people can become way easier to manipulate so, like, mm-hmm. people like Charles Manson use mushrooms um, to, to, like, help manipulate people. It makes people's minds very malleable. It makes you very open to new ideas. It makes it, it makes it so that you can reset your brain and sort of change the way that it's wired. Mm-hmm. Overcome trauma, overcome uh, bad programming, but it can also it create, it creates new programming. So, I do think that there is a, a place... For them, I don't think the government should necessarily be regulating them, but I think there should be some education as to like, hey, if you're going to do mushrooms, do it with a therapist, do it with people you trust, people you know and love, you know, like make sure that you're in a really safe environment, make sure that you're around people that, you know, you vibe with, you know, I think that's important. But I think getting into this nonsense, this utter idiocy of sending people to prison for mushrooms or marijuana 
what plant or anything, anything. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's methamphetamine. You're an adult. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Yeah. You're grown. You want to do heroin? You want to overdose? Good. I don't yeah. care. It's you. I think we we've talked about Maybe that before good, here. Where we know you are, but we 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 stand on the same. Uh, like I agree with a lot of that, and, and like you're saying, like I, I'm the same way. If you want to go do that, but now if you go do that and you stab somebody, exactly. I also can't drink alcohol and stab people, exactly, or yeah. smoke cigarettes and go, go stab yep, people. Yep. See, I feel the same way. If I smoked cigarettes and stabbed someone, the cigarettes didn't do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I if I drink a fifth of whiskey and drive my car into a daycare, yeah, the whiskey didn't do it. I did it. I made those decisions. Yep. I decided to get behind the wheel of a car after drinking a fifth of whiskey. It was me. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible. Everybody, the, the problem is, the reason why we, I think that we limit people's access to things like we try to do with prohibition with alcohol, with the, oh my God, the effects of prohibition. The highest murder rate this country has ever had was during prohibition back in the 19, like 30s. Highest murder rate we've ever had. Well, then it, um, uh did that, is that what started moonshining or was yeah moonshining was yeah moonshining was a result of prohibition because you couldn't get alcohol anymore yeah so let's just go make it ourselves just like meth just like heroin just like crocodile yep. just like spice all that stuff all that stuff all these horrible drugs we have now are just because they yeah. made drugs illegal yep. like they did it then then they want to be like well you know if we make drugs illegal we'll have all these horrible drugs just we we already do because of you mm -hmm. and the original original drugs now that you look at it weren't I don't, I've always heard that like back in the 70s and 80s when they did just cocaine. Yeah. Like the, I think I think I think Joe Rogan was talking about this, but like there wasn't that many deaths or deaths until they started cutting it. Right. Yeah, that's true with It may not been on it may have That's been on definitely true and w w crack was definitely a result of prohibition. And that's definitely a big 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 difference from cocaine. I'm mm -hmm. I'm just saying I'm not saying you should do cocaine. I'm not saying you should do cocaine, but um don't get got. Appreciate that, homie. Says you're doing God's work, hundred percent. This is this is. I, I I will die on this hill. I will die on the hill of ending prohibition. We have to end prohibition. I'm a grown man. I'm yeah. an adult. Yeah, I'm an adult. And I, I don't think the government should have their hand in it, like you're saying, because I think Mississippi is a good example. How when we voted in uh, medical marijuana. And then they, they went back down. and said, we don't like the way y'all voted that in. We're going to change it. Yeah. Oh, my God. That Everybody <laughs> should have been voted out in the next election term. That, to me, just, I was oh, I was like, there's no way. How, yeah. how are you going to ask the people to vote and then you don't like their vote? Yeah. And absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It is absolute lunacy that we live in a country. We still yeah. have counties in Mississippi that you can't buy alcohol in. I know it. <laughs> we still have alcohol prohibition. That's why I'm surprised we are starting to get medical marijuana now yeah. because we still have alcohol prohibition here, dog. Yeah. We still have people that think that have it's have to travel bad, to different counties to get. Yeah. And then I see people on Facebook all the time. Oh, my Basically, goodness. Bootleggers in 2023. And, oh, now, here's what I'll <laughs> say. Here's what I'll say. Okay. I will say – there are downsides to every single decision. There is no perfect decision. If you make mm -hmm. weed legal, one of the big downsides that you're going to find is you're going to smell weed more places. That's one of the biggies. Yeah. You're going to smell weed. Yeah. You're going to smell weed in parking lots. You're going to smell weed outside stores. You're going to smell weed places. Mm -hmm. That's just the way that it is. Yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm okay I see these people as we legalize weed. It makes me absolutely sick. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm getting off on this. This is not what I had planned today. <laughs> it makes me sick, though. I see people that want to make weed illegal because they don't want to smell it. Yeah. Okay, here's what you're telling me. Here's what you're telling me. You don't want to smell a skunky flower, so you want to throw people in prison and murder them. You want to shoot because every law is enforced at the point of a gun. Mm -hmm. Every law is enforced at the point of a gun. If I decide not to comply with the law, I can be killed. Oh, no. Let's, let's use some examples. Let's say I don't want to wear my seatbelt. Another stupid law. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. If I don't want to wear my seatbelt, I'm an adult. But I don't want to wear my seatbelt. I get pulled over. They give me a ticket. I'm not paying this ticket. Right. Okay. Eventually, I go, it's supposed to go to court. I don't show up for court. What happens? Put out a warrant for my arrest. I go to jail. Yep. No, I'm not going to jail. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to get shot because mm -hmm. I can fight. Yeah, something as simple as a seatbelt ticket. Seatbelt ticket yep. got me killed because I did not comply to your unconstitutional law. Right. To your and when I say constitutional, I'm not even talking about the Constitution in general. The Constitution guarantees us the rights that we should have no matter what. Mm -hmm. 
and it need, there should be some amendments added to that. I believe taking more, get it, give granting people more rights, mm -hmm. like the right to an altered state of consciousness if I so choose. It doesn't protect my actions while in that altered state of consciousness. If I take bath salts and eat somebody's face off, Right, okay. yeah. We talked about it. Well, so then maybe. The, yeah, the, I the consequence to, of what should, you did. Well, yeah, I, I should be put down because I'm a rabid dog. Yep. You know what I mean? You start eating folks' faces, you ain't a person no more. That's cool. You got you to gotta live up to <laughs> the consequences. Yep. But, bro, if you're going to sit here in 2022, mm -hmm. oh, nope, 2023, yeah. we're ahead of year. We moved up. Yep. And you're going to sit here and tell me that I can't <laughs> smoke a flower that makes me silly and hungry and think about the universe? Or do mushrooms that make me commune with the heavens and, 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 and experience God and come back? And I mean, when you give terminally ill patients mushrooms, they come back with no fear of death. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Um, everybody. This, that's that's the this same the, one that says it all the, the time. Same person? The same, dude. the same guy keeps asking us to fart on the podcast. Until it stinks really, really bad. That is a strange request, Peyton. Peyton, that is a strange request, man. I don't know. I don't know if it's like a sex thing for you. I think it's a sex thing. I think Peyton Page gets off. I mean, there is a there is like a fart porn. It's a thing. Really? Oh yeah. There's like videos of dudes and they'll get down in between the girls' butt cheeks That's and the girl will fart and they're just. <laughs> <sighs> Just in between them cheeks, dog. Just huffing, huffing that stuff, baby. Just. Do you remember that TV show, A Thousand a, Ways to Die? Peyton, is it a sex thing, dog? I need to know. Is it a sex thing? Probably. I do remember that TV show, though. There was an episode on there, and I remember seeing that um, a guy died because apparently you can take you can like take your take a crap into like a five gallon bucket, and over time. It if there's enough in there, yeah. So. so you can go in and huff it, and people use that to like get high. Well, mm -hmm. dude, like. Oh, he got too high, I guess, on it on fart smell. Smells, it sounds like bullshit to me. It was on that show. I don't know. It just sounds like bullshit. I don't know. I think a lot of things on that show were bullshit. Was it supposed to all be based on actual deaths? See, I don't know that either. I, it seems like they just started coming up with ways people could theoretically die. To, and then they get doctors on there, and the doctors be like, I mean, yeah, it could happen. Yeah. And then they, they just end it right there. Just like like they cut out the doctor. Like, it would probably never happen, and it never has, but it could. And so they just, uh, he says no. Uh, <laughs> I'm a fan for life now, boys. Thank, thanks, uh, don't get got. And Peyton Page says this is not a sex thing. So okay, cool. that's cool, dog. I was just wondering. I didn't know. I didn't know, bro. I didn't know. I can't fart on command, so. I can't Sorry. either. I don't know. Really, I'd be afraid if I tried, I might <laughs> have an accident, you know, <laughs> Matter of fact, I am getting over it. My son had a stomach bug this weekend, and uh, he gave me a little touch of it. And mm. yesterday, I got a little sick. I never Everybody else up, been safe? Everybody else it? has been good. I, good. I stayed home from work, and I played Mr. Mom, did a bunch of laundry, and a bunch of I did probably 14, 15 loads of laundry. Went to the Dad, laundromat God. to get it done, yeah. yeah. I was just doing multiple machines because my, my, my washer was too slow. Yeah. We had too much laundry. You Dude, know? I... I'm, I'm glad you said it because we let ours build up like that too, where mm -hmm. you look at it, it just gets overwhelming. And then by the time it's overwhelming, it's like really overwhelming. We shit. I don't do laundry. <laughs> okay. I pay somebody to do my laundry. <laughs> my laundry is kept separate from my family's laundry because they're gross. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true it story, can't, it dog. It can't be in the same way. That's a true story, <laughs> homie. I just, I keep my laundry. I mean, I got some. You talking about your kids or? Just everybody. Because they're crapping on themselves. Just everybody. And stuff. They're crapping on themselves. And I mean,. Just fluids and and kids I are mean, kids are dirty. And then my son, my sons want to keep every cover. I had to I had to lay the law down on some shit that I never thought I'd have to lay the law down. I had to lay the law down on my sons because they wanted to put every cover in the house on their bed to sleep. They just mm -hmm. want all the covers. Okay, it's not a big deal except for one thing. Luke still pees the bed. Oh, so every time Luke pees the bed, every cover in our house has to be washed. It smells like piss. Mm. Every cover. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I'll go get a cover to cover up on the couch or the recliner, it's watch cool. some TV, and I'll, oh, and I got to go wash it. <laughs> Didn't you find a turd wrapped up in one one time? Hell yeah, I found a turd wrapped up in one. <laughs> I thought that was you. The yes, sir. That. <laughs> My son thought it was funny. This is a true story. This is not a joke. He was probably three years old at the time. My son went <laughs> and he thought it was funny. I assume he thought it was funny. As a joke, he took a shit in a like a fleece type blanket like with all the hairs on it 
Oh. Okay. Yeah. And he took a dump in the middle of it, and he folded it up, and he hid it behind the couch. Mm. Or behind, and the whole house just smelled like shit. The whole house smelled <laughs> like poop for weeks. Dang. Weeks, homie. That'll drive you crazy. And we're we're, I mean, we're like, going everywhere. I'm like, Luke, did you, did you have access somewhere? Did you take a diaper off somewhere or pull up? Like, like what happened, dog? Like, Sawyer, do you know what happened? Everybody's saying they don't know, they don't know, they don't know. And then one day I unfold it. Kadoosh, right there it was, a package oh and a gosh. turd the size of my freaking forearm just that gum. laid out. It wasn't that big. It was probably about J Long, though. About J Big Round. I, got, a, I have a, multiple videos on my phone. Big I have multiple poop videos on my phone. I swear to you, I could pull up my phone right now. If I had time, if there was someone else for you to go off of to talk to while I was looking, I've got one where he just took a shit in front of the TV. It was massive. Hold on. I'll find that one. I believe it because between that story I've heard you tell and the one where you put your hand in it that one time, that still oh, yeah. makes me cringe thinking about that. Oh, yeah. That was rough. I don't have time to look for it. But he just took a dump in front of the TV. Yeah, and we didn't even know it. He did it all the time. He used to take shits on the floor. <laughs> just take shits on the floor. He did it all the time. And he just super one of them, it was it was like nutty. It was like it looked like it had nuts in it. It was like Disgusting. big, and and then somebody had stepped in it and slid. Oh man! And I and I, 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 I took a video of it, and put it on my Facebook page, and I was like, "There goes your game truck." Um, just drove by. I was Jared, and uh. I took a I took a video and I was like, do, I don't know what to do. Do I hold his nose down in it, and hit him with a newspaper? <laughs> you know what am I supposed to do? Yeah. What am I supposed to do when this dude just t starts taking shits in the floor? I don't know what to do about that. And then that one time, dude, they took a dump in their upstairs bedroom, and he decided. I don't know if both of them did it. Or it was just him. I'm not sure, but they just took their hands and rolled it up in rolls like play doh. Oh god! And rolled it, and they mashed it down into the carpet as they did that. So they're rolling it in the carpet, and they're just mashing it into the carpet, like they were playing with lighter. Yeah, and then dug it, and then it then pushed it up under their dresser. Oh gosh! And that, but that was what they did. That was the that was the time I put my hand in it because then I was showing everybody, and I reached over and I touched the rock, put my hand on the rocking horse, and then they had wiped their hands off on the rocking horse. And I come back with a big old glob of poop on my hand. I've handled more poop, more fecal matter. In the last seven years of my life, mm -hmm. especially starting two years ago and back five, than I ever thought was possible. I feel like I work for waste management or something mm -hmm. or, or like a sewage treatment plant. I touch so much feces. It's in, it is insane. I get why you wash your clothes separately now. Yeah, my, my clothes are washed separately. I don't put my clothes in the same. Well, I mean, some of them are. I keep most of my clothes. A lot of my clothes I keep here. Mm -hmm. All my training stuff I keep here. It never goes home. My geese never seem, have never been in my house. Mm -hmm. My rash guards have never been in my house. A lot of my training clothes have never been in my house. How do you, how do you wash them then? I take them to the laundromat and I pay somebody to wash them. Oh. A dollar, a dollar fifty a pound now. It used to be a dollar a pound. Dollar fifty a pound. So I the spend one about. down here? Mm-hmm. Okay. I spend about, a, I spend about 30, 40 bucks. 30, about 20 to 30 bucks. A week. Um, I need to start doing that with my geese. Yeah, because I watch. I mean, I watch. They're hard to wash in that little conventional, like home washer. Yeah, they'll fold them up. They'll fold them up for you and send them back. And good to go. I come back, hang them up. Huh. Good to go, man. And I do a lot of my other clothes that way too. I just don't. I just don't like the other thing is is our clothes will pile up and I don't I don't have as much clothes as everybody else in the house does. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have the clothes that I wear, and then when I stop wearing stuff, I, I sometimes I'll get rid of it, whatever. But I've only got a few things I really, really wear, mm -hmm. and like four or five pairs of pants. If I wait for it to make the laundry cycle, that could be six months. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not saying it is six months. Yeah. I'm saying it could be. It's several months. I've had clothes come up missing for months and months and months, and they'll end up at the bottom. See, because the way my wife does laundry, God <laughs> bless her, so I love my wife <laughs> When very you get much. it back, it's like a new shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like oh, my God, I forgot about this. <laughs> It'll end up at the body of a, bottom of a laundry basket. Well, then other clothes get put on top. When she does laundry, she starts with what's on top. Mm -hmm. And then more clothes get put on top. And she does those clothes. And the more clothes get on top. And she does those clothes. And stuff on bottom never gets washed. Yeah. So if you don't ever get to the bottom of the laundry ha hamper, it's you never there. get – it's just there. And yeah. I've had clothes that I've went in. So I, this is what I did this weekend, actually. There's been about five or six times in our marriage since I've been married to my wife. And I love my wife. I have nothing negative to say about my wife. I'm just saying this is what happens. Mm -hmm. And we have laundry that piles up. And what I'll do is I'll load all of the laundry into the back of my truck, and I'll drive to the laundromat, and I'll just take up every machine in that bitch. 
<laughs> I'm just like, I know I'm pissing people off because I'll just be like, all these in this row are mine. And I just load them up all the way down. Doom, doom, yeah. doom, and I do, I'll, and I'll drop 50, 60 bucks in a day at the laundromat. That's not bad though because you get your laundry done pretty quick for yeah, that much. Right. Then, now, the, now, let me tell you the kicker. Now you have to fold all that laundry. Oh, yeah. And that is a bitch. I believe it. That's another level, dog. I mean, when you start talking about, I remember one time my, my wife and daughter. You're looking like three hours. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was longer than that. One time, everybody went out of town. Everybody went out of town. And again, guys, drop comments, questions in the chat. We will respond. This is an Ask Me Anything episode. Don't know how we got on this topic, but drop any questions or comments down in the chat, and we will answer them. Um, they were out of town for a week, and I decided to clean the whole house and do all the laundry. Mm -hmm. It took me like three days. I did 30 something loads of laundry Good at man. the laundromat. 30 loads. It took me multiple days at the laundromat. Mm -hmm. Just, I would drop them off, start them, go back to the house, work for a while, come back when they were done, pick them up, take them back, fold them, whatever. And it took me a week. Dang. A week. Now, that being said, in that week, I also reorganized all the like dressers, mm -hmm. closets, everything, so I could have somewhere to put all these clothes. Yeah. So that's one of the big things that took me a long time. But yeah, I wasn't even hardly working. I was stay. I was at the house working. I wasn't even coming into the gym that week. I just stayed home and tried to get the house cleaned up. I also hire somebody to come in and do our laundry once a week, mm -hmm. and we still don't get it all done. I hire somebody to come clean the house, and while they're there, they do laundry. I've been thinking about doing that. Hire somebody to come clean. It's not that bad. It's not as high as people think, man. It's, it, you don't have to have that much money to mm -hmm. afford to do that. But just with like, you know, with two kids and and. My wife and myself, like the yeah. house just gets dirty. Does your dirty. wife work? Yeah. Oh yeah. So the house just gets dirty quick, yeah. dude. In a second. And and Balin is a is a live and live, live soul. Oh, my wife, my is, wife is a my yeah. wife is just a she's just she's just out here having a good time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She ain't trying to she don't make the kids do that much really. Mm -hmm. Like she she's just like, We're all having fun. Let's just let's just have a good time. <laughs> you know, and so as a result, my kids also have very similar, very similar um, Slick, stuff. <laughs> Slick says, what is the most efficient way to connect with someone's jejunum when throwing a punch? And how much power should I put into it? Okay, I'm going to finish I'm gonna finish my laundry talk and I'm going to get into that. Don't let me forget the jejunum talk right. here. Um, so we end up, we have a house full of hellions. My house is just, it's full of great kids. My kids are great, mm -hmm. but they are little demons <laughs> in terms of, of how dirty they are. I mean, just, I have videos on my phone. I'm talking about, I'll, sh I'll show you one right now. I'll pull up one on my phone because I know I can just go to my Snapchat and do this one because I saved it on my Snapchat when she, she, she sent it to me. This is just one, one little example. Can't leave these two Let's see, can we zoom in here? Two minutes. That is That is my youngest son. They emptied the lotion... Oh my and gosh. just painted, and then look at Sawyer. Did you get into it too? <laughs> yeah. No, he's white. Look at me. I can't put my hand in it. I just, I just put my hands in it. You're covered. You're covered in it. He's still playing in it. All the time, Dang. right? All the time. So, especially when, little boys. Oh my god. And they're so close in age, too, so they just play off yeah. each other. The jejunum punch is a dangerous technique you have to be very, very careful careful with. When you are throwing a jejunum punch, the number one thing that you need to know is accuracy over power. Accuracy over power. As long as you connect with the jejunum, the fight is over. <laughs> okay? So connecting with the jejunum is the important part. When you talk about how much power you need to throw, I would say as little as possible. And it still be an effective punch. Mm. Like I'm not saying you can just touch a jejunum and the fight be over, but as long as you can strike the jejunum with up to eight to ten pounds of pressure, the fight should be over. Nice. I would go twelve to fourteen pounds just to be safe. But jejunum punches are the most de dangerous punch that is illegal in combat sports. If commissions, if the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Mississippi State Athletic Commission, com athletic commissions anywhere in the world were to learn how dangerous a jejunum punch is, mm -hmm. they would be outlawed. I'm surprised it's not legal in Mississippi because they had some lenient. They are legal, uh, but they won't be if they find out about them. Yeah. Well. The jejunum punch is a is a is a next level technique. If you're if if you're slickster, 
If you're trying to learn a jejunal punch, first thing I would say is you need to be in a controlled environment. You need to be around people that know how to throw jejunal punches properly. You need to be around people that can that can regulate jejunum strikes and have jejunum pads. If you don't have a jejunum pad, the jejunum is exposed when training the jejunal punch, and you could kill somebody. Mm. Imagine taking seven, eight shots to your jejunum back to back to back to back to back. You die. You would die. It can't be done. It's not possible. So be very, very careful when throwing a jejunal punch. Um, is the jejunal is the jejunal punch uh, more effective, southpaw or orthodox? <laughs> oh Keith, oh Keith Kavanaugh. That's pretty good. Um, I would say overall, um, the jejunal punch is. Probably more effective from South Paul because it's harder to see coming. It, it is. Uh, don't get guy says, what do you think about Andrew Tate? I think he's legit. It depends on what you mean uh, by legit. I think that he is a legit kickboxer. I think he is, le- he is legitimately made a lot of money. Um, as far as his new, the new things he has been uh, accused of, I don't know. I don't I know what heard, happened there. I haven't heard much on that lately. In terms of what uh, – me and Alan talked about it a little bit. He – I mean, I know what happened, but I hadn't heard since since he's been incarcerated. Well, he's, I mean, they're going to be doing an investigation. They're going to dive into it. Yeah. As far, far as what I think happened, I really don't know. I think he, I think, I think a lot of what he is doing though is he has figured out how to like get people going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Either, I don't either, Keith. It did break me though. It, it got me out of character there. Uh, Andrew Tate is definitely playing a character though. He is. Definitely, he's figured out how to say the right things, and then what he does. I've talked about it on here before. He likes to he likes to say like a rude hook comment, and then when he explains himself, what he means really isn't that controversial. It's just true, mm-hmm. and so it creates a lot of like creates a lot of like like division and like like arguing in the comments. So, so some people love him, some people hate him. I think a lot of people are just kind of starved for masculinity. And so when you get into this like super masculine character who's a world class fighter and you know says what he thinks and dates a lot of women and has a lot of money and you know I think a lot of people are going to latch on that especially young people who are mm-hmm. being taught that masculinity is evil and so they're really going to latch onto a character like that because they're looking they're looking for a savior. Um, so yeah, absolutely no man, no man can survive, no man can survive seven eight jejunum punches. Um, mm-hmm. It can't be done. Cannot be done. Uh, I, I like talking about an, the Andrew Tate thing just because I, I like analyzing people like that. Just like Jake Paul or Dana White. I like looking at people who have done extremely well and then analyzing kind of how they did it and why they did it and if it'd be would, if, if I would be willing to kind of replicate it. In Andrew Tate's case, I, I would not. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't necessarily disagree with everything Andrew Tate says, um, I wouldn't I, – I wouldn't – I don't agree with a lot of what he does say, and I don't really – I wouldn't want to live with the lashback, you know, like yeah. of, of, of that model. The model of saying really rude comments, getting people going, and then, and then kind of like capitalize on, on it. But that's the, that is the currency right now of social media. The currency right now of social media is can I get people talking? Can I be polarizing? Mm-hmm. The more polarizing character I can put forward, the bigger I'm going to become. And people have figured that out. They've been elected to political office from doing it. They've become famous online from doing it. Um, and polarizing works, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and I say some somewhat polarizing things on here, but mostly I'm just silly. It's hard for yeah. me to. I can't pull off the Andrew Tate thing. I'm too silly. <laughs> you know, I'm just yeah. I'm too goofy, and I'm and I can't hide that part of my character because that's who I am. Is I'm kind of a goofy dude. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm very masculine, but I'm just goofy. I'm just a silly. Yeah. I'm a silly man. I like that that um. Cause that's what makes it fun. Like a lot of times when we're like you was talking about beforehand, when when we're not on air and, and we're joking around, and when Tyler's here and joking around, it's just fun. I like yeah. that. You you've got to learn. We were talking about before to, how to loosen yeah. up on here because yeah. you're funnier off air. You're a super funny guy. <laughs> you're funny on air too, but you're funnier off. I think air. I've got to use the camera. The cameras is what throwed me off. You want me to turn the TV off? We can't on this episode, but in the future, you, no, we can fine. turn the TV off. I'm getting used to it. Because I told, I was I asked Alan if he wanted me to do that. I was like, Hey man, you want me to turn the cameras off? Mm-hmm. You want me to cut cut the the video? I like the video because I can like look and see if I look fat, and then I can kind of like I can kind of yeah. straighten up, and, uh, you know, 
I like it because you know, I like being able to better. see the comments too. But yeah, on the live, it, it just takes some getting used to. Which which I'm I'm getting used to it. But like, remember when we started and we were back in the room back and it was just audio. Yeah, I don't. It's just a, I don't know. To me, that was just a big transition. The video but, changed things for sure. I think us being able to see the, the video mm-hmm. is the biggest change. Seeing the cameras to me. Cameras don't bother me. I've kind of learned to block out cameras. I'm, I mean, I'm getting used to them. Like they're, they're uh, like it's definitely getting a lot easier than what it was. You know, I you used just, to I used to just look at them and be like, oh damn, the camera's looking at me. People are gonna people are looking at me right now. And, oh, this is live. We're not gonna be able to edit nothing. He got mm-hmm. buried by Greta Thunberg and Re- Rebecca Black. I mean, she did have the funny little dick in energy. I mean, just because you're masculine doesn't mean you can't you can't get you can't get slick got by a little a little. Um, I'm not familiar with who Rebecca Black is. It's Friday, Friday, got to get down on Friday. That song that come out yeah, several years Rebecca Black, right? Is that oh, what we're that. talking about, right, Slickster? Um, Jake Paul versus Andrew Tate, boxing, who's my pick? I'm going to be honest, and this is straight not going to Straight boxing? A, yeah, boxing straight up? boxing, I'm going to say Jake Paul. Just from what I've seen, he's a better boxer. I don't I, mm-hmm. like when I look at Andrew Tate's style. He's got a very kickboxing style. He keeps his hands really, really low. That, that's what I was just going to say. I've watched yeah. some of his videos. And he, 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 he has a, he has a really yeah. low stance. I think Jake Paul's he he depend, he's he's about my height, and I think he depends on his reach a lot. And I think if Jake Paul is similar in reach, I think it's going to be a long night. Um, I think he's I think he, he he's thirty five, so he's still good on age. I think stylistically, though, I think that um, I think that. Jake Paul is the more technical boxer. When I look at the two boxing and training, and I'm, this is not a dig at, at Andrew Tate at all, honestly, because I think Andrew Tate's a good fighter. Um, but I think he's centered a lot of his style around kickboxing. And as someone who has done kickboxing in Muay Thai and someone who has boxed and done MMA, the striking is very different. Mm-hmm. It's more different than you think it's going to be when you move. When I move from – when I've moved from training Muay Thai to, to, to boxing – you don't think it's going to be that much different, but it is. The angles are different. The distance is different. The timing is different. Uh, the combinations are different. Um, it's not that I don't think that Andrew Tate could do it. The other thing about Andrew Tate, too, is I think he probably – he's kind of trained that style for a long time. It might be a little harder for him to transition. But Jake Paul's going to MMA now. He's got signed by the PFL. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I saw something the other day. I don't know if it was somebody just – throwing something out or if it was somebody actually trying to, you know, get a potential match. But now that he's transitioned into MMA, would would you be interested in watching him and Ben Askren go MMA? Yeah. I, th- I think. Well, for sure. Yeah, I'd like to watch yeah, that. Yeah, I'd, I'd watch that. I saw something saying. I don't now, think that'll happen, now, though. No, but now that, you know, because they boxed, he stepped into Jake Paul's world. But now if they, you know, if he stepped into the ring with Ben Askren, that'd be a different He's, yeah, he's a monster think, on the ground. I don't think that. I don't think that that fight's going to happen. I think no, a, well, I think it was just a suggestion. But a I silly think that would be Jake Paul. Jake Paul is going to take really intelligent fights. I've heard Nate uh, Nate Diaz well, is a potential said, is a potential match in the PFL because Nate Diaz think he's, contract just ran out. Didn't he say that he would? He wants to fight Nate Diaz, but it's got to be a two fight contract, one boxing and one MMA. I don't know. Isn't that right? I don't know. I think I believe, that's what he said. I believe Nate Diaz. Would I think he did because he said uh, he said I'll fight Nate Diaz. And I think he'll beat him boxing. Boxing, and then I'll fight him MMA, and he said, because if I don't got bigger balls, I mean, he said, if that don't show balls, then I don't know what does. Something along them lines. I don't know the exact quote. Y'all want to see the Rebecca Black Tate? There you go, Mo. You want to you pull that up? The Rebecca Black Tate. Um, back and forth. Uh, him coming to the PFL, I'll be honest, it's exciting because he, he is a better athlete than I think a lot of people are giving him credit for. Mm-hmm. He's good enough, and he believes in himself deeply. Yeah. Like He really, truly thinks – he is the best. He thinks we he's touched be on that champion. the other day when we were talking about when I'd asked if y'all had talked about the belief topic yet. Yeah, but yeah, um, like you're saying, he does. He he believes it. Yeah, he he believes he's he believes he is the best in the world. He's going to be the best. You know something that I've noticed that's been happening is this podcast has gotten bigger and bigger. Um, I see people, and I, they might just be looking to see what we're doing, but it's gotten a lot more often recently. Oh, in the window here. Yeah, I see people driving by and looking at us. Like that, like people will pull through and like, uh, you know, look yeah. at us and stuff and just kind of like cool. be peeping, trying to see what we're doing. All right. So Rebecca Black, I was 13. This man is 36. Andrew Tate needed. Oh, okay. Let's pull it up. Here we go. On the side. Yeah. I'm going to spend the money. We can spend a little time. All you got to do is ask me. Yeah. 
And I can make you look classy Second night you walk past me I'm gonna whip around I had to get you in my backseat They call me Mr. Plenty Plenty. Check the leather on the Bentley Try your friends, we'll get friendly Maybe I can be your sugar daddy Sugar daddy, yeah Cause I'm all about money Money No. I'm the type of so what? I'm not, I'm, I don't understand what's going that on. That was his rap. That was his music he put out. Yeah, that was silly. <laughs> he shouldn't have done that. That was a mistake. Kind of hard for me to take him seriously now. Mm. How did that? But what? Did that was rough. I got something. Play that again. I'm kind of. Let's, let's play that back. This was so. So now that we know what's happening. <laughs> this is Andrew Tate's. I've oh, never okay. Heard this. So oh my she God, was, we've got. Okay, so she was clowning. On we've him. got to find the rest of this video. Andrew Tate needed to be arrested for dropping this, anyways. <laughs> Let's look at this. Let's hold on. Play the play the song back. Play that back. A guy, Big bitches on the side. Yeah. I'ma spend the money. We can spend a little time. All you gotta, gotta do is ask me, yeah. and I can make you look classy. Second night you walk past me, I'm gonna whip around. I had to get you in my backseat. Check the leather on the Bentley. Check your friends with your friends. Maybe I can be your sugar daddy, sugar daddy. Yeah. Cause I'm on about money. Let's go. My playlist, dude. Playlist. As soon as I, when I leave here in a little bit, I'm thumping it. Down Bro, down. what was he thinking? What was he thinking, bro? <laughs> <laughs> he literally watched that video and was like, oh, yeah. Drop it. We're putting that out. <laughs> Drop <laughs> that's, it. That's what we're going to put out. <laughs> Drop it. No, don't ask questions. Drop it. <laughs> they call me Mr. Plenty. He looked like he was laughing as he was doing it. Like, there's no way that was serious. Can we find that whole video? Can we Man. please pull that? Like, hey, hey. What's I, the name I'm of it? Sure. Yeah. Is that is. Yeah, can w somebody in the chat? So, can y'all drop that the video? Does anybody know what that whole video is? The Andrew Tate rap video. That was, that was something. I like it. That was something. <laughs> I've never. How is that not a more popularized? That's the first time I've ever heard. That of. is crazy. I tell you what is crazy is, um, um, right, and that's what she was saying. Yeah, that's what she was saying. At least she was thirteen, dog. And he was thirty. <laughs> how Friday, old is he now? Friday is that was, recent? He's thirty five, thirty six now. So I guess I don't. That didn't look recent though. He, cause he he looked he had hair, he had a little hair. Yeah, he was still definitely a grown man. He, he was still an adult. <laughs> he was still definitely too old to put that trash out on. There's wow. Yeah. Oh my god, that was that was pretty insane. That was something. That's funny. Mm. Yeah. I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> Let's me and you come out with a rap song. Me, you, and Tyler. Oh, for sure. A man up rap song. We'll get somebody to produce it. All right. And if anybody knows a good producer, y'all send them our way. And I'm going to come out. And, dude, everybody's doing this, though. I mean, because Jake Paul was doing music. Yeah, but Tyrone ours, Woodley. Ours he, will be tight. He was making music. It'll be tight in the fact that we know we're trying to be funny. It's going to be good. It's going to be But boring. we're going to act like, let's act like we're not trying to be funny. Let's put it out and let's. <laughs> what act if it like, just drops and it goes like, like all the way up the charts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna argue. I mean, I don't. Okay, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't go all the way up the charts, but maybe what it does is go viral on YouTube, and that's it will. more likely. It will. That's likely. I think it could. I think that could happen. I just need somebody to write it, direct it, all the things. I don't know anything about music videos. I don't either. Or music I wish at I all. At all. Can't find the full song. Um I wonder what the name what's the name Islam of it? Islam versus Alex. That's a really good one. What's your opinion on Islam versus Alex? Alex who just not uh Piera, how whatever that just knocked out Izzy. I hate per and Islam yeah. that um what's how do you say Islam's last name? Per, I don't know because it is it's a Brazilian name. Per her, per, per, no, no, I, I, uh, Alex is Brazilian name. Islam yeah. isn't he's oh, Dakistani. Um, is that Makachev? Makachev, yeah. Islam about? Makachev, yeah. 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 Um, I think that's a good, good moving method. up to 185 is a big difference. I'm telling you, as someone because Islam's a one as a welterweight, right? Mm -hmm. And as someone who has fought but, at welterweight and middleweight, moving from welterweight to middleweight is a big jump, especially with it's Alex different. being he's a big 185. And it's hard, <laughs> it's massive. hard. I mean, he that's the thing is he hits, he's got good striking, but he hits crazy yeah. crazy hard. He's got just dynamite in his hands, he can just knock you out with that left hook. Mm -hmm. 
any time. It's just hard to it's hard to fight a five round fight with somebody like that if they don't gas. Yeah, you know that was the thing. Like you've got people like Anthony Johnson who were that way at two hundred five, mm-hmm. but you know if you could kind of hold him down for a few rounds, seemed like he would kind of gas. Mm-hmm. Um, but somebody like Alex Piera, who I'm think I'm saying his name right. I don't. Know I don't. I don't sure. know how to say. That's uh, what it sounds like right to me. I. It's hard to fight a guy like that for 25 minutes straight with four ounce gloves on. I mean, four ounce gloves. Again, as someone who's been hit with four ounce gloves and hit with boxing gloves, it's a big difference. It's a different oh, yeah. feel. Totally different feel. Totally different yeah. feel. Bare now knuckles that, a different feel too. Now that it's 2023, is I, I saw something the other day on Jones and Ngannou. Is that going to happen? Is that is there? No, uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that's in the works. I wish that would happen sooner than later. I'd like to see him step back in the. Who do you think's got that one? Jones and Ngannou. Man. If it stays standing, I would say Ngannou. But if it goes to the ground, I'd definitely say Jones. I think. I think if Ngannou Jones connects spot with IQ, him. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the only way Ngannou wins is if he can connect. And in 25 remember, minutes, there's a lot of opportunities to connect. Because I'm surprised. He, you remember the time when he knocked out Alistair Overeem and turned his head into like a Pez dispenser? Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't kill him, dude. Yeah, that was nasty. That uppercut that was That uppercut was vicious. Nasty. That power he, is unreal, dude. He's one of those people, man. There's just some people – that are just born with the gift of punching. They just can hit. There's just some people out there that can just, they've got it. But we hadn't seen John Jones at heavyweight neither. That's true, but we know he's not going to have that kind of power because he's a a 205 er He's moving up. He's not going to have it. He'll definitely lose some of his speed. I mean, the idea, maybe, I don't know. You uh, think? Well, he's been been training to be a heavyweight for two years now. Yeah, I don't know. I I think he'll be okay. His fight IQ is a lot higher. I think he's going to be the superior wrestler. You look at like okay, Stipe beat Nagano. I don't know how much Nagano his and Stipe and 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 Cormier were kind of they were to me they were kind of neck and neck in terms of of who's the better fighter. Stipe mm-hmm. got him two times. Cormier got him once. I believe Stipe is a little more technical than Nagano, but Nagano's got that eraser. That's the thing. Can Nagano land? That's mm-hmm. that's really all it comes down to. Can he land? Can he hit him? And when you've got the kind of power that Nagano does, that's all it takes. Of course, yeah. And if he just, lands, you just, just have you, to land. You just got to land. There's a high good probability time. you're going to sleep. Uh, but like you said, if it, I, I, I agree though. If it goes to the ground, his high, his ground fight IQ, Jones's is far standing out fight IQ is way higher. Too. Yeah, he's not. His, 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 his fight IQ what, all the way around is better than Nagano. I'd like. He to is a it. better fighter than Nagano. He is a more skilled fighter. Uh, oh, let's watch it, the whole yeah. video of this song. We got it. He found it. We got it. I'm pretty sure that's Mark. Thanks, Mark. Nice. I was 99% sure. But, yeah, let's pull that bad boy up. I'm excited. Heck yeah, I'm, I'm ex- <laughs> pretty pumped. I'm pretty pumped. Um, yeah, Jones is just a better fighter. He is. He is. Yeah. You look at Nagano fight, and you're like, really? He's the heavyweight champion of the world? He's. It's just a different – are we up? Is it up? That's strange. Never done that before. It's like in the chat. It's weird. Um, all right. Yeah, Jones is just a better fighter. He's a more technical fighter. Mm-hmm. You look at Nagano fight, you look at his boxing and stuff, and he's kind of wild. Kind of like a lot of really powerful fighters that have that eraser, they never develop. I think they're never forced to develop the technique to make them super, super technical. You look at like Deontay Wilder, who's a great, who's a good boxer. I'm not taking anything from Deontay. Matter of fact, there's been talks of getting him on the show. Oh, that'd be dope. Uh he just right down the road. Yeah, he's not far from here, and we've got a lot of mutual friends. And he said he said he was going to do it, but we just can't get a mm-hmm. a date set, and we can't. I don't. I haven't really been in touch with him. That'd be um, pretty cool. And I'd love to, but you look at Deontay versus like Fury or some of these other heavyweights, and and he's he kind of swings a little wilder. He he, you can see he's winding up a little bit more, but he hits so hard that it just kind of doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And he's still knocking everybody out. There's just some athletes that have a gift. They just have a gift yeah. that other athletes don't have that you can't teach, you can't train. Yeah, that connecting power, dude. There's a lot of guys like that. Yeah. Um, like, I can hit hard, but I never had that gift. Like, you, who was it? Was it Shane Carwin who had that dude? It was Dirty Box name? Yeah, just, Frank Mir. Just a it short a uppercut. Mir, yeah. Like, power like that. Yeah, from, five, those 5X five hands. He yeah. just threw that short uppercut on, on the wall and just, and just smoked him, just yep. starched him. The amount of power that's in that punch is... Yeah, and then is, Nagano, uh, who dropped Stipe with a jab. Yeah. He dropped Stipe with a jab. Yep. A jab. He dropped the heavyweight, the greatest heavyweight champion we'd ever had to that point with a jab. Yep. 
I mean, that's in, that's insanity. That's crazy. Yeah. That is absolutely crazy. Dang. Yeah. I mean, you just it's it's hard to it's hard to. Um, oh, the name of the song is Sugar Daddy. It's three minutes long. Wow, it's like an actual song. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm really excited about this. They Who, call me Mr. Plenty. Check they, the leather on the vent. Man, I like it. It goes pretty damn hard in, a, in its own way. It goes hard in the way that, like, it goes hard in the way that, like, I want it to go hard. Yeah. You know That's what I mean? That's a new like, phrase it, I'm like, going to say. Never, I never listen to that. But is it pulled up? They can see it. All right, go ahead. Is this is this the the whole video, maybe? Oh man. Huh? Okay. Here we go. Andrew Tate, baby. Are we gonna have to like stop it halfway so it doesn't play the full song so we don't get like copyrighted? Yeah. Who is this? Is this Andrew Tate singing? This isn't bad. I just that doesn't sound like it. We was in the shadow, now we're coming out to play. Anything you need, you just gotta say, baby girl, come roll with sugar daddy. Girl, you look good. I don't okay, wanna lie. <laughs> no, I wanna fool, but I don't wanna try. I'll take you to Dubai, put you in the sky. Money on a plate, girl, I know you wanna ride. I'll make you feel nice. Get a I little like high. Voice, but if I'm on the grind, then I probably won't reply. No. I'm the type of guy. Uh. Bitches on the side. Yeah. I'ma uh. spend the money, we can spend a little time. Bars! All you gotta do is ask me. Yeah. And I can make you look classy. Bars. Second that you walk past me, I turned the whip around. I had to get you in my backseat. I thought it was Bars. Gonna, I thought it was gonna show the music video plenty, where he's in it. Yeah. Check the nice. leather on the Bentley. Nice. Show your friends. Call me Mr. Flynn. Maybe I could be your sugar daddy, sugar daddy. Yeah. Cause I'm worried about money, money. Maybe I could be a sugar daddy. Daddy. Bad. Yeah. Uh, that's not bad. 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 That's the only thing that I'm a bad. I know you got problems, baby. I really want to hear the guys sing. Yeah, same as Andrew Tate, but I think it's really bad as well. Is there another part by Andrew Tate? Really? really? I don't That's all I'm be saying all week long. Oh yeah, all week. I'm gonna call you, Mister Berlin. What up, Joe? Girl, tell me she's your friend. Put her in the you car. Got money I can spend. Give it a whirl. I'll have two sugar babies. I got everything in need. Live, we're listening to Andrew Tate's song. Ladies in the back of my Mercedes. Couple bitches. That's another reason for the fact that even Joe is sure. He's like, I'm getting money on the daily. I can be a sugar daddy, sugar lady, sugar lady. Yup. Oh. Cause I'm all about the money, money. Maybe I can be a sugar daddy, daddy. Yeah. I ain't in a hurry, hurry. Joe's the only thing that I'ma marry, I mean, marry. Yeah. I know you got problems, I've heard words. Oh, for sure. Stress, I've heard words. Andrew Tate, give me one more verse, dog. Just give me one more. Huh? Oh, man. Oh, man. Is this his only song? I hope he has a whole album. And I'm not an Andrew Shea hater. I would just would love an album with this. This would be... Sugar daddy, sugar daddy. Hey, dude, do you remember? You can cut. You can kill it. It's, it's over. You can kill it. I'm done with it. I'm done with this. I'm ready to move on. Uh, did you? Do you remember the uh, felony fights knee drop? Did we ever show that on here? Yeah, y'all show because y'all were talking about we it. We never showed it on here though, right? Not on here. No. That was gnarly. I think we need to show that. Yeah, that was uh, so. So that was crazy. Uh, first guy in the UK artist. He's really good. Tate just doesn't suit it. Yeah, he's just yeah. he just doesn't have the he doesn't have the. Yeah, the rhythm, the rhythm singing by that guy, whoever he was, was it wasn't yeah, bad. It wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's pull, can we pull up the felony fights and he drop? Do you think we'll get in trouble for that? I hope not, because <laughs> it surely not. I don't think so. We're pretty deep into the podcast. Pretty much, Mark is going to have to, I think, uh, or, or or don't get got, or maybe Keith is still on. One of y'all is going to have to report us. So I don't, I don't think, I think we're good. Let's pull it up. Let's pull up the felony fights and he drop. Um, so if you guys are watching and you've never watched the felony fights and he drop, and if you're listening on the podcast, 
Go check out on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, or however you listen. Go to YouTube and and fast forward to this part because you're not going to get the full effect if you don't mm-hmm. like actually, if you don't actually watch the knee drop. This was like one of the most famous knee drops in felony fights. I yeah. used to. Well, if you've never watched felony fights and you don't even know what it is, you're probably going to binge it after watching this. Cause yeah. <laughs> well, well, you're going to be disappointed because this is probably the best clip. There's not, there's not bad ones, though. There's some good ones. I got really, really into felony fights when I was, like, late high school, set about 17, 16, 17, 18 years old, and don't play it yet. And I got in, I got really into felony fights, and I used to go down to Video USA, and I would rent them for, like, a couple dollars because mm, nobody oh, else was renting them. Yeah, you know? by uh, Faces of Death and stuff like that. Yeah, but and, and, and uh, what it was, it uh, bum fights. It was, yep. like, bum fights. Felony fights and what that would do, what felony fights is, is it was an organization. I'm sure probably got sued and shut down, but it was an organization that would get people that had done time to fight each other mm-hmm. in no rule street fights, and they just go out to the desert or into like ditches or whatever, and yeah. they just get these dudes to fight. And most of the fights were lame, so it was lame. A, it, a lot of them were lame for dudes coming straight out of the pen. Right, because like, you think I, dudes coming out of the pen, they're going to really be able to bang, but they can't. No, I was... Well, them dudes yeah, no. Think about all the dudes <laughs> that come out of the pen and come in here, and they can't fight. Yeah. And you're like, really? Like, how thought y'all supposed to be fighting? I'm not saying that nobody in the pen can fight. Right, yeah. I'm sure there's a just, few. Just the ones that were a wrong. lot of them, yeah. I've been in touch with a lot of them that also... And I've, I've known some dudes that came out of the jail that could fight, mm-hmm. you know, legitimately. Like, even as somebody that, that knows how to fight, like, they were tough, they threw hard punches... You know, they were they were tenacious. I had never seen that one. I've seen a few of the felony fights, but I hadn't seen that one. My favorite one, my favorite one was we had a um a dog distracting the <laughs> Um we had a a guy that had done like one night. If she'll if she'll sit and chill, she'll be all right. Um he had done one night in jail. And he was they were like, well, how much time did you do? And he goes, just did an overnighter for drunk t- t- public intoxication. They were all laughing at him. Like, oh, what? You're going to get killed, bro. But he was back there getting his hands professionally taped. This was on felony fights? This was on felony fights. He was back there getting his hands professionally taped. And they were like, oh, this dude's going to get killed. And he's back there getting his hands taped up. And he's like, yeah, well, how much time did you do? Like two nights, two days. And they were like, oh, you didn't do any real time. <laughs> and he went out there and walked really? the dog. On that dude, you could tell he was a fighter. Though. Yeah, he was like a trained fighter, kind of coming in undercover. He was like had his hands up, moving good, pop pop, and he just starts the dude early. I like, like that. just knocked him out. It was hilarious. That's probably my favorite fight, and that was Man. like when I really decided to start training for real. I think from felony fights. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was the moment where I was like, oh, was, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Like to be a badass like y'all. I got to go to jail, do all this shit, go to prison, get tattoos, and still might not be a badass. This dude did one night in jail and trained. And come out like a champ. And he just come out and just starch this dude who had done like 15 years. And I was like, I want to be that dude. Yeah. I want to be the dude who's a badass but didn't have to go to jail to do it. And is still more badass than the other guy. Like, I want to be that guy. Dang. And that was one. That was a turning point in my life where I was like, I don't want to be a criminal anymore. <laughs> I want to be a fighter. Off of felony fights. Yep. The guys that did bum fights, that wasn't the same group, was it? It's it felony fights? Yeah. No. It wasn't. No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't it, think. They usually won a whole lot of good fights on those. Neither. Bum fight. Yeah, because they're just getting homeless dudes to fight yeah. each other. They're getting mentally ill That's people. That's what I was going to say. Most of them were, weren't yeah. all correct. Most homeless yeah. people are just poor, pitiful, mentally ill people. Yeah. You know, they're not tough guys. They're this desperate, mentally ill. They don't even know what's going on a lot of times, I think. like. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's sad. It's honestly, it's really sad. Bum fights was kind of sad. You know, that was a, there was a whole thing. There was a bunch of lawsuits that went into that, and the guy who started it, another guy, kind of stole it from him. And so there was another. The guy who made all the money off of it is not the guy who started it. It was like his buddy that kind of went in and put a lot of the groundwork in. <laughs> was too, was that the guy that showed up on Doctor Phil and trolled yeah, him? Yeah, that was like- him. He, he dressed up, <laughs> shaved the top of his head like Doctor Phil, put the suit on with the fake mustache. Yeah, that was the guy. That was the guy that like stole it. I think. Okay. They kind of like was like one. It was one of the guys that started it, but that was hilarious. That was it. Was pretty funny to show up on Doctor Phil and look it, shave your head to look just like his head and wear a suit. Oh man. Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. That was good. I've had a lot of fun today, man. This has been a good episode. I appreciate you guys who tuned in to the Man Up Podcast. Make sure to go give us a like on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. 
uh, YouTube, TikTok at the Mississippi Superman Show. That's the name of our YouTube channel. Man Up Podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We appreciate you guys being here this episode. Uh, go watch some felony fights. You got to get on back places of the web. Back places of the web to find them. Thank you guys for being on this episode.